Let's say I ask you a theoretical question. What forces are acting on a pulley that you never saw? Well, let's see. Now we have a pulley right in front of us, so let's try to understand the different forces acting on this system. Now, we need more information, obviously. Let's think about it. So here's the information we got. We have two different boxes of really anything. It could be sand, for example. We have 5 kilograms of sand on the left and 10 kilograms of sand on the right. What do we expect that this, this system would do? This system would obviously cause this box, which is the heavier box, to go down and the lighter box to go upwards, right? That's what we'd expect. And there's going to be a tension over here. So let's break this down. What forces are acting on the system? The first force we can say is weight, obviously. We can have weight. So let's call this weight one, weight two. Why are these two weights different? Well, that's because of the mass. We have different mass. So, what is the other force that's, that's, uh, that's acting over here? The other force is tension. We have tension that's going this way, and we have tension that's going this way. Let's call this T1 and T2. But because we know that this is a system, a rope, that's attached to both of these, that would mean that the tension on one equals the tension on two. So we're just going to call it T. Okay, cool. Now, if I were to ask you a question, find the acceleration, what would you exactly say? Well, before we do that, let's break down this entire system in its separate little box. So let's analyze each box itself. So if I were to ask you to write all, let's call this box M1 and this box M2. If I were to ask you to write all the, the net force in the y direction, what would you say? Okay, before you answer that question, think about the x direction as well. Is there any net forces along the x axis? No. So let's go back to the previous question. What are the forces that are acting in the y direction? So let's think about it. This over here just means the sum, the sum of. The sum of the, all, all the forces over here in the y direction, they are going to equal tension 1. Let's just call it tension because we established the fact that this, this, the whole thing, tension one, two, is, are the same thing. So tension is, is you know, so here, here you go. Let's also consider this. This is the y direction. This is the, obviously, the, the top direction. And this is going to be going in a negative direction, right? Cool. So tension is causing this entire box over here to go upwards. So that's why we have a positive T over here. Cool. But the next force that's going against tension is the weight itself. So let's down, let write down weight. So minus weight one. Okay, cool. Uh, let's break down the this, this whole equation into a step further. Let's think about it. What is weight equal? Weight is mass times gravity. But what mass are we talking about? We're talking about m1. So let's write that over here as well, m1. So we're going to have t minus m1g. That over here is an equation that is representing the entire forces, the net force in the in the y coordinates, in the y direction. Cool. Let's do the same thing for the other box. So let's just say m1 over here, and then m2 right over here. Okay, cool. So we're doing the same thing. Fy equals, guess what? Here's a little trick. Now, because we're analyzing both of these separately, that gives us the space to do whatever we want to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this, the, the side. So what that means is that if we were to go upwards, then we're going in the negative direction. If we're going downwards, we're going in the positive direction. But what does that exactly mean to you? So let's say if we had this simple axis over here, right? And we said this is the plus and this is the negative, right? What I'm doing over here is just rotating it like that because I have the freedom to set whatever the hell I want to say. I could also say this if I want to say. Uh, so yeah, okay, so we've established that for that part. Let's uh, think about the rest now. Okay, so we have the entire uh, forces in the y direction are going to be this way now. But now because we said this is negative, this is positive, what's going to happen now? Now, tension is going in the negative direction. So Let's consider weight first. 
because we like to write our positives and then our negatives. So weight 2 minus tension. Okay, cool. That is our equation. Let's also break this down a step further. So the net forces along the y coordinates is going to be m m to g minus t. Now this is a simple trick. Now if I were to ask you to add both of these together, these two equations together, this one over here and this one over here, this is essentially saying this is the entire y force. This is the tension we can find over here. So what's going to essentially happen? Let's have a look. So here we go. We're going to copy this. We're going to add both of the sum of the y-coordinate forces in the y-coordinate. This is what we get. Let's not forget our equal signs as well. That's going to be M, M2A for this. Uh, and this is going to be M1A. Cool. So if we were to add these together, guess what's going to happen? T's can cancel out, which is pretty convenient. Now we only have one unknown left, which is acceleration, which we're looking for. So there you go. Let's see what happens. So uh, we're going to have M2. Let me just keep the colors consistent. M2G minus m uh, 1g, and that equals m2a plus m1a. Now, you could probably see a pattern over here. We're solving for acceleration. This acceleration can be solved by doing a simple trick over here. So we're going to factor acceleration out of this equation. We're going to end up with m2 plus m1 and we can also factor gravity out in this situation over here. So gravity, uh, let me just keep this color consistent. Well, there's no point of keeping it color consistent at this point. Grams, or, or sorry, gravity. So we subtract that, or we substitute it outside. So M2 minus M1. And we're solving for acceleration. So we can divide this side by this. So m2 plus m1, that's going to cancel out, and we're going to get m2 plus m1. So this over here is going to give you the acceleration for what we're dealing with. You plug in the, the equations or the necessary information given, so we have m2, the mass of the second object, which is 10 kilograms minus the mass of the uh, first object. If you do all this together, you will find the answer to acceleration. And if you're asking what is this g over here, this over here is a gravitational force. And this over here equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if you want to double check, is this actually correctly done, you can think about the units. So here we have mass, or excuse me, uh, we have uh, so all this over here is going to cancel out, as we see over here. So that's canceled out. Kilograms will cancel out. And the only thing that's left is the gravitational force, which itself is represented by meters per uh, second squared. So this is done correctly. Now, the answer that's given could be positive or negative acceleration. If it's a positive acceleration, that indicates it's going in the right direction. And if it's a negative number, that indicates the acceleration is going in the left direction. And this is all reference to our coordinate system, right? So if it's going to the left, uh, that would mean that we, since we're talking about the um, acceleration, it's, 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 uh, it's, 